Hello, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to present Professor Yurko, one of the most important and most known experts in uh, inverse spectral problems. Today, Professor Yurko is going to talk about inverse problems for discrete operators. Professor Yurko, thank you very much for your generous contribution to our seminar. You may start whenever you want. Thank you very much. So one more, the title of my talk today is inverse, uh, inverse, more precisely inverse spectral problems for discrete operators or for difference operators is the same. And it's well known that uh, difference operators are uh, discrete analog for differential operators. Uh, for example, if you would like to study inverse problems for differential operators, then it's, it's well known that the simplest object there uh, is a Sturm-Level operator. Moreover, the sturm level operator was the first from the historical point of view. And if we would like to study inverse problems for discrete operators, then uh, the most, the simplest object is the Jacobi operator. And uh, similar, it's uh, from the historical point of view, Jacobi operator was the first for study. And it's the simplest object. And uh, it's known that Jacobi operators is a, uh, are, more or less natural analog for sturm level operators. But also well known that uh, inverse problems for discrete operators usually are simpler for studying, essentially more simply for studying than differential operators. Theory is simple. But nevertheless, uh, inverse problems for discrete operators uh, are important area, are important area of, uh, is important area for uh, inverse problem theory and important for mathematics itself and also for applications. And there are a lot of works devoted to this apparatus. And uh, uh, today I suggest you a very short review, very short. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll try to you to show the main ideas here and uh, main results. Uh, you see, uh, let me have a look. Oh, here is some papers, but it doesn't matter. Today I don't want to uh, don't want to study bibliography, only results. So here's the, our plan. In the first part of my talk, I'll try to show you uh, main results for Jacobi operators. First self-adjoint case, then non-self-adjoint case, and then. Uh, the second part of my talk will be devoted to a uh, more complicated uh, situation for the so-called high order difference operators. A high order, what does it mean high order? Uh, let me uh, return back to the differential operators. You see, if we consider uh, sturm level operator is the second order. So, uh, sturm level equation is the second order equation. Uh, and all equations of order more than two usually are called high order uh, differential operators. So why? Because uh, the uh, specialist in, in uh, spectral theory knows uh, that uh, uh, there, are, uh, there is big difference between second order equations and third order equations. But no difference between third order equations, fourth, fifths, and the uh, 1,000 order equations. Uh, so all equations start, starting from third order usually are studied uh, more or less similar. And of course, a specialist knows that uh, high order equations are much more difficult, essentially more difficult for studying than the sturm level equation. Similar, situ similar situation in discrete operators. Uh, you see, Jacobi, Jacobi operators uh, correspond to Jacobi matrices. Jacobi, it could be a matrix, it's the matrix with three non zero diagonals. Main diagonal and surrounding. Uh, neighboring to diagonals. And higher order difference operators correspond to matrices with arbitrary number, non zero diagonals, but finite number. Finite number, arbitrary numbers close to the main di diagonal. And high order difference operators, of course, a little bit more complicated for studying than, than Jacobi operators, but there is no such big difference as an 
uh, differential operator theory. Uh, so high order difference operators a little bit more complicated, but not so serious like uh, in differential operators. And uh, the third uh, uh, part of my talk uh, is, is devoted to uh, the so-called triangle structure. It's a very wide generalization of discrete operators. It seems to me that now all discrete operators, known discrete operators, uh, usually are a particular case of triangle structure. So it's very, very general, general uh, very general structure. And you see, uh, since uh, by the way, high, uh, results for higher order differ difference operators and for triangle structure, uh, these results are mine. And uh, uh, from, in principle, ideas for studying uh, the second and the third part of my talk, ideas are not so difficult. Ideas is completely clear. It's easy to, uh, it's easy to explain, but technique not so technique is more or less complicated because many notations, a lot of indices and so on and so on. In the short talk, it's, it's difficult to understand all these notations uh, using only slides. So I suggest uh, use the following. I try to explain the results for Jacobi operators in details. It's simplest, simplest operators. I explain all details and then uh, in the second part of my talk and the third part, uh, this part uh, will be sh short, very short, uh, only ideas, because uh, understand all notations and all indices is too, too much. Uh, and uh, let's try to do this this way. So we start. Uh, first, we consider the self adjoint case. Consider the equation Unfortunately, in this, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, the question one uh, is our object where uh, coefficients b nu, a nu, and b nu small are real. Moreover, uh, b nu are positive. It corresponds to the self adjoint case. And it's necessary, it, uh, of course, it's convenient and even necessary. Uh, to find some canonical form for this equation. It's necessary to normalize it. There, uh, there are two, uh, two possibilities, two canonical forms. The first possibility considers the case when a symmetrical case, when B nu capital is the same as B nu small. And uh, this we have the equation two. It's more or less popular form. Uh, from, for, for example, for studying direct problems, this form is usually more convenient and more natural. But for studying inverse problems, in my opinion, it's better to use another, another canonical form. Namely, it's better to reduce this problem to the case when B new small is one. Namely, it's natural to consider namely equation in the form three. Uh, how to reduce, how to normalize equation one. It's uh, very easy. It's, uh, for this purpose, uh, it's possible to make this substitution. Instead of y nu, we consider another uh, variable y nu tilt. And uh, after this substitution, uh, the equation uh, instead of the, uh, our equation, we get an, uh, another equation, but of the same form with another coefficients. And the uh, connections between new one and old one uh, is the same, it is, is here. And the uh, case of one, uh, canonical form one, corresponds to the choice uh, of this choice of D. If we, uh, we can, choose uh, the coefficients uh, d nu as we wish. And if we, if we choose uh, d, uh, the coefficients d nu this way, then we get the first canonical form. If we take uh, here the misprint, of course, case two, the last row is case two. If we take uh, d zero by this way, we get the second canonical form. And I prefer to the second canonical form. 
more form, it's much more natural. Let's consider, uh, oh, I, I want to, I have one question. Uh, you see here I have some, your, um, I can see you, but because of it, I can't, I can't see the part of the slide. Is mm -hmm. it possible to shift it? how to do it? Maybe if I uh, put this way, is it okay? Yeah, it's good. We can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's our main object. I consider this equation where A new are real and B new are positive. The operator L is called the copy operator. And we define the polynomials PK and QK as a solution of this equation under the initial conditions. It's more or less standard. And of course, such polynomials exist and unique. And for example, P2 is, and Q2 is it's written here. Then suppose that uh, imaginary part of lambda is not zero. Then there, there exists a holomorphic function M such that the linear combination, this linear combination belongs to L2 for each lambda. Uh, it's clear that uh, phi zero is one and uh, phi one is M. I'm sorry. So it's, it's clear that you see here, this uh, uh, representation is definition. But uh, phi zero is one and M lambda is phi one is a property. But a little bit later, we will do the contrary. It will be the definition. As a function M lambda, oh, sorry, again, I have a little bit No, this way. Uh, so the function M lambda is called the while function, or perhaps uh, it's better to call it while type function because while never studied such uh, problems. And the solution phi uh, is called the while solution for this operator. Then it's uh, well known that for sufficiently large lambda, uh, the following asymptotical formula hold. It's this series, and generally this series, it's, uh, we don't study convergence of the series. Sometimes uh, this series converges, sometimes not. It doesn't matter. Uh, in, in principle, this series are asymptotical. In particular, it's possible to calculate M1, M, M2, M3, and so on. Usually MK are called the, mo the moments. Uh, for the while function M. Also, it's known that there exists a real increasing function sigma of lambda, uh, such that uh, the following uh, relation holds, delta is a Kronecker symbol. And uh, the function sigma is called the spectral function for the Jacobi operator. And there is a connection, well-known connections between uh, the while function and the um, spectral function. Uh, this remark is not important. It's only uh, if, for example, the sequence is abounded, then uh, these functions are holomorphic for sufficiently large lambda. And in this case, uh, the series uh, really converge. But for us, it doesn't matter. We can omit the slide. Uh, denote uh, we introduce such numbers, delta k. And this number is constructed as a determinant from the moments of the value function. And it's easy to prove that delta k all are positive. And we can consider and can study two inverse problems. Inverse problems when we have, when given the spectral function, construct our coefficients a and b. And then there's problem two, given the wild function, construct these coefficients. Uh, of course, these two inverse problems are equivalent each to other, 
And the for us, it's not more important and there's problem too, by, uh, by the following reasons. First reason is that inverse problems too, and the y function is better than the spectral function from a mathematical point of view. It's much more nat natural object in inverse problem theory, uh, and for differential operators, the same. Uh, and uh, inverse problem too is better uh, uh, from point of view of applications, because m of lambda uh, very often appeared in applications but sigma of lambda never. And uh, I forgot to say one more. Let me return to our equation, this one. You see, we consider this equation when uh, nu is positive. It corresponds, if, uh, it corresponds to the differential equations uh, to the case of the half line. If we consider sturm liouville equation, uh, usually uh, three cases uh, are studied uh, finite interval, half line, and the whole line. The whole line is a very specific case. Until now, there are no good results related to the case of the line. But the case of the uh, half line and for the uh, finite interval for Sturm really period, uh, these cases are different. Of course, there are some. Uh, common properties, but in, in principle, the case of the half line is different from the case of the finite interval. Uh, similar cases can be considered for discrete operator. For example, here we can consider the case when nu is positive, it means that it corresponds to the case of the half line, and uh, I will call it the half line case. And uh, it's possible to consider when, uh, the case when nu is integer. In this case, uh, it corresponds to the case of the line. This case is still now is not good. There are no uh, good results here. Of course, there are some results, uh, some uh, scattering problems and so on. Uh, but till now, the case of the line uh, unfortunately has problems for study. So we study namely the case of the, line, of the half line when nu is positive. But the case of the finite interval is really for discrete operators, it's not really a different case. It's a particular case of the half line. We can see a little bit later that if, for example, uh, B, uh, B nu starting from some new uh, zeros, it corresponds to the finite interval. So it doesn't make sense to study separately finite interval. So this means that for us, it's quite enough to study the case of the half line. So let us go here. You see, for this inverse problem, inverse problem two, uh, the uniqueness result is already known, algorithm is known, and necessary and sufficient conditions are also known. Necessary and sufficient conditions really is formulated here, uh, you see. Uh, it's uh, delta k are positive. By necessity, it, it, it already proved. By sufficiency, we, can, we have to require that delta k all are positive. And then we can prove that in this case, there exist a Jacobi operators with this spectral characteristics. And the uniqueness of algorithm, I show you below for more general case, for non self for non self case, in order to not speak twice. So let's consider non self case. It's much more interesting, and uh, it's more general case. And we will study it a little bit different way. And uh, in particular, of course, we get the results for self adjunct case as a particular case. Uh, for studying non self case, we need the generalized functions. And let us introduce uh, such notions. Let lambda be the set of polynomials of the form 5. G1 and G2 and Fk are different for different polynomials. Fk are complex numbers. And let the sequence of Pk of complex numbers be given. We can define a linear functional P on lambda using the uh, relation six. 
is the definition. How to calculate uh, this brackets means action of P. And we denote by F the set of all linear functionals on lambda. And it's natural uh, that elements of phi are called generalized functions. Each generalized function, P from F, is produced by a sequence PK. And this uh, PK are called the moments of P. And clearly that P is uniquely determined by its moments uh, using the formula six. Uh, then the following remark is important. It's convenient to write a general function P as a formal series. It's not really serious. It's not, uh, con uh, we don't study convergence. It's not a symptotical series. It's only way to write, nothing more. Of course, it's uh, when we write this way, it, it means nothing. But this um, uh, way of writing, it's very convenient for, uh, for study. It's, it's very convenient way to write. So we, everywhere we'll use such, uh, such, uh, um, such representation, uh, not only P, but every uh, generalized function can be written this, this way. So we can multiply uh, P by elements of lambda using this formula, it's definition. It's more or less clear, it's natural definition. Then we can denote, denote by F plus the set of generalized function such that the moments are zero for K negative and zero. And uh, we denote by F zero plus the set of generalized uh, function pi with uh, zero moments uh, for negative K. It's clear that, for example, if P belongs to F plus, then seven takes the form eight when formal series starting from one. Now consider the Jacobi equation of these complex numbers. And the operator is called the non-degenerate if uh, B nu is not zero, or not zero. And now let us introduce again a while solution and while function, but this definition will be quite different. You see, uh, let uh, phi nu be a solution of equation nine, such that phi zero is one, it's a normalization condition, and the phi nu is from F plus. It's the definition. Since it's from F plus, this means that the negative moments are zero. And by definition, we put M of lambda, by definition is phi one. And the solution phi is called the while solution and the generalized function M is called the while function for Jacobi operator A. You see, let's compare with a definition for self-adjoint case. Then, then in self-adjoint case, we consider the linear combination of, uh, of polynomials P and Q and requires that this, uh, a linear combination belongs to L2 small, L2 small. Instead of this, uh, we suggest that uh, definition, a little bit uh, another definition, that phi nu is a generalized function for the special class with zero moments for zero uh, indices. And this, uh, this uh, definition is more natural than the uh, definition for, uh, for, pre uh, for previous definition. You see, it's, it's uh, obviously that uh, representation of uh, phi nu and m of lambda uh, has uh, the form 10. m lambda starting from k, k is equal to one and uh, other uh, moments are zero and uh, phi nu starting from k1 is equal to nu. It's clear 
When we start to calculate this coefficients, it's clear that uh, this form is really, really this form. Uh, so, and uh, uh, it's clear that, uh, let me have a look at the next slide. Uh, the very solution is uniquely constructed by the formula this way. It's uh, completely trivial. We need to substitute uh, the representation 10 to the equation and uh, immediately uh, then compare the moments. And we immediately get these uh, relations and from these relations, uh, phi k nu can be, can be calculated uniquely. And again, we introduce the same polynomials, pk and qk, completely the same definition. And let us consider the first degenerate case. When, uh, the, the first example, if b1 is zero, then m lambda is this fraction. Uh, let b1 is not zero, but b2 is zero. Then m lambda is the following fraction. Let uh, some first coefficients are not zero, but b r is zero. Then m lambda is a rational function. And uh, this uh, case just corresponds to the finite interval. If we, for example, uh, start to study finite Jacobi met matrix and start to study inverse problems, so we immediately obtain this real function. So this, fu this uh, real function uh, rational function corresponds to the finite case. Uh, from the point of view of half line, it corresponds to degenerate case. But uh, we don't, it's quite enough for degenerate case. And let us consider non degenerate case. And you see here, uh, uh, here important, it's very simple calculations. You can see that it's very simple. But important because uh, in mod, uh, for generalizations, this this uh, ideas uh, works, for example, for higher order equations, and for even for triangle structure, partially it works. So it's typical typical uh, arguments. You see, uh, R i by definition is lambda in the sum power. And of course, uh, each polynomial uh, can be represented this way. Moreover, we can calculate coefficients bk and ak using formula 12. It's easy to obtain, it's sufficient to substitute to the equation and compare moments. Uh, so you see, this formula 12 are important for inverse problems. You see, if uh, in the future, we can calculate C, CK. In this case, using CK, we can immediately calculate uh, the coefficients of the Jacobi equation. So we will use these formulas for the inverse problem. Uh, the second step, the following relations are valid. Uh, here is a misprint. Of course, it's not a definition. These two dots must be omitted. It's not a definition, it's a property. And in the self adjoint case, it was a definition, but here it's a property. So phi nu is a linear combination of these polynomials with these coefficients. Then let us denote, really it's here definition. We introduce numbers mu i nu uh, by this way. And it's easy to calculate that is just equal to moments of the while function with uh, index, index i plus nu plus one. So if we know, uh, if we know moments of the wave functions, of the wave function, then we, automat we automatically know mu i nu. And the last, uh, the last uh, relation, it uh, looks like uh, expansion theory. As this means, the generalized function m lambda is a generalized spectral function. It's the same. By the way, it's very interesting. Uh, let me return to the sturm liouville equation. In the sturm liouville equation, Marchenko, many years ago, introduced 
uh, the generalized spectral function for non self adjoint Sturm Liouville operator. And then, much later in my work, I introduced the generalized while function. And if we consider while function and the spectral function, of course, uh, these objects are different. Of course, there are uh, connections between them, but nevertheless, uh, they are different objects. But if we consider generalized spectral function and generalized while function, it's um, perhaps it's strange, but really it's one of the same linear functional, one of the same. Uh, in, uh, in my discussion with Martin, I said him this interesting fact, and the first uh, he didn't believe. He said it's completely different objects. But uh, but if we consider generalization of this object and consider the linear functionals, it's one of the same. It's one of the same objects. The, the same effect, the same fact for different equations. You see, it's really the generalized uh, while function and the generalized function, the generalized spectral function is the same. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Substitution 11 into 15, let me return back. If we substitute 11 into 15 in the exp this expansion theory, we obtain the linear algebraic system TK, this one, with respect to the coefficient CIK. And the determinant of this system is just delta K. Moreover, it's possible to prove that all the delta K are not zero. Uh, we can solve this system using Kramer's rule, for example, and we can obtain this formula 17. So you see from the inverse problems of point of view, if we have MK as the moments of uh, while function, then we can calculate mu, mu gs, and then using 70, we can calculate c i k. And now it's easy to solve this inverse problem. In inverse problem three, given the generalized wave function m, cons construct l. Algorithm is very simple. Using m, we can construct coefficients uh, c i k by 70, and then calculate coefficients of the Jacobi equation using 12. That's all. And uh, algorithm is simple. Uniqueness, of course, is uh, obvious. And necessary and sufficient conditions uh, is formulated here, are formulated here. And the generalized function m lambda is the while function uh, for non-degenerate Jacobi operator if and only if delta k is not zero. I remind you that for the self-adjoint case, delta k are positive. For the non-self-adjoint case, delta k are not zero. By necessity, we prove it, proved it. By sufficiency, we require it, that delta k is not zero. And if we require that delta k is zero, we can solve the, the, can solve the linear, mm, linear algebraic system, and so on and so on. So as I can see, it's, uh, Yes, it's, uh, it's, that's all. We finished with the Jacobi operators. You see, it's very simple. But this idea, this idea is uh, introduction to a generalized function. It's uh, very natural, but uh, it's very useful idea. And uh, this simple al algorithm uh, can be generalized for uh, other classes of different equations. And then I show you very shortly how it works for more, more general situations. How are the discrete operators? Let's consider uh, question one. It corresponds to the matrix with finite number diagonals. P diagonals over main diagonal and Q below. And then construction similar, you see. Uh, the operator L is called non-degenerate non if A new P is not zero. 
And we can introduce the analog of the Weyl solution. In this case, it's not scalar, it's vector. Uh, and uh, the definition is similar. You see, again, we require that uh, this generalized function belongs to a special class of generalized function, phi plus zero, and some normalization conditions. Delta is the Kronecki symbol. And uh, instead of, uh, in, uh, for Jacobi operators, we have scalar while uh, fun function, but here we have matrix one. It's uh, it's natural analog of the while function, and I call it the while matrix. It's uh, and uh, it's my object. I introduce it in one of the work. Um, um, it's analog of while type matrix for differential operators. And the first problem, uh, one is formulated as follows: construct L from the given while matrix N. And the solution will be similar. Oh, here's a, some slide devoted to general case. Even it's possible to consider non general case. This is a little bit a different technique, but I have no time to explain it. So we are meet the, the slides and let's consider only degenerate case. Oh, non degenerate case. For non-degenerate case, operators, for non-degenerate operators L, we can obtain more convenient algorithm and necessary and sufficient conditions of the solvability of the inverse problem. And then construction similar to the Jacobi operators, but a little bit more uh, notations. You see, we introduce the uh, vectors RK and RK star, it's really, it's really degree of lambda. And delta is the Kronecker symbol. Then we introduce the uh, vectors polynomials PK and QK under the following boundary condition and uh, initial conditions. Then it's possible to, uh, of course, it's possible to uh, write uh, the formula six, the representation uh, polynomials using the degrees of lambda. Then substituted as this representation into our difference, uh, difference equation and compare the corresponding uh, coefficients. Uh, uh, this means that corresponding um, moments, we arrive to this system. And uh, it's if you, uh, uh, after analysis of this relations, it's easy to get that we can obtain recurrent formulas uh, for calculating a q, q nu using c k nu. This formula seven. You see, it looks like for a Jacobi operators, only a little bit more complicated. This is important lemma. Instead of expansion theorem, we need here uh, some relations uh, instead of uh, relation for Jacobi operator. And it's possible to prove this lemma. It's not so difficult, but uh, some technique, of course, we need some technique. And it's possible to prove this lemma, eight and nine. And uh, similar to the Jacobi case, we introduce uh, numbers mu i nu using uh, this uh, generalized function this way, uh, the while matrix multiplied by, by uh, degrees of lambda, special case. And uh, we consider delta k as a determinant of this mu. And substituting in our representation polynomials into uh, expansion theorem, we calculate, we obtain this algebraic system. And the determinant of the system is delta k. And it's possible to prove that they are not zero. And you see, it's completely similar, completely similar to uh, Jacobi operator. And then it's possible to calculate C i k after solution of linear algebraic system. We get formula 11. And uh, so really algorithm is clear. 
But necessary and sufficient conditions here are formulated a little bit more complicated. You see. Uh, oh, we above introduced the set M star because the sl slides, I, I omit the slides. Let me return back here. Denote by M star the set of matrices where elements of matrices are generalized function for this class and some uh, normalization conditions. So let's return to our case. So, and here M star, we defined a little bit different way. M star is a set of matrices from the, the same class, but a little bit different normalization conditions. And the following theorem gives us necessary and sufficient conditions for the solvability of the inverse problems for non-degenerate high order difference apparatus. Serum two. For the matrix M from this class M star to be the vial matrix for a non-degenerate operator L, it's necessary and sufficient that delta K are not zero for all K. And in this case, the operator L can be found by the following algorithm, but we already understand that this algorithm is quite similar to the Jacobi, to the uh, corresponding algorithm for the Jacobi operator. And uh, it's possible to prove the corollary. Uh, the, this corollary that, uh, corresponds to the self adjoints In this case, uh, delta K must be positive. It's necessary and sufficient conditions. And at last, uh, I have only three minutes, uh, or, or a little bit four minutes, a triangle structure. It doesn't make sense now, and I have no time to explain what does it mean exactly, because it's a lot of notations. But I only, uh, first of all, I want to say that it's very wide generalizations, very wide. And I only show you one example of the triangle structure. Let me find it. This one. Let's consider this pencil. Pencil means that uh, nonlinear dependence of the spectral parameter. You see how it, uh, what's the construction of this? The first matrix without lambda, but it's uh, triangular matrix. The next term, next matrix, uh, one over lambda and one diagonal over the main diagonal. The third term, lambda square and two diagonals over main diagonal, and so on and so on. And in all these matrices below the main diagonal, in principle, arbitrary elements. So infinite number of diagonals below. No, no restriction. Restrictions only above the main diagonal. And you see, it corresponds more or less to the integral differential apparatus. Differential operators uh, corresponds to the case when we have finite number of diagonals, non zero diagonals. Uh, but uh, integral differential case corresponds to the situation when uh, arbitrary number of uh, diagonals can be non zero. And you see here, for example, uh, the Jacobi, for example, uh, operator, Jacobi situation is here. Uh, let's consider only two first matrices, other are zero. This first, uh, consider only first row. Uh, take the first matrix uh, is identity. I, uh, let uh, the first matrix uh, be identity matrix. And the second one has uh, three diagonals. It's Jacobi case. If we have to consider, for example, case when we have two diagonals. In this case, the first matrix is identity matrix again. The second one is zero. And the third one uh, has the structure. And the higher order difference apparatus corresponds to the case when we have lambda in uh, P uh, power and uh, all previous mat matrices are zero. So it's a very general situation. 
And nevertheless, this situation is only a particular case of uh, triangular structures. No. You see, uh, in recent years, uh, there appeared uh, several, uh, several papers devoted to situation with five non-zero diagonals. It seems to me it doesn't make sense to consider such objects because uh, it's a very particular case of these structures. And moreover, another example, it's possible to use even uh, to study inverse problems even for differential operators. For the special classes of differential operators can be represented as a triangular structure. So it's a particular case of the triangle structure. So triangle structure is more a very general object. And uh, of course, if uh, someone wants to study uh, inverse problems for a concrete class of dif on difference operator, first of all, this guy has to read uh, my work related to triangle structure. Perhaps uh, this inverse problems uh, is already solved using the triangle structure technique. So it's um, perhaps uh, the time is over. So as the time my talk is over, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Yuko, for the excellent talk. Uh, any questions or comments? Anyone? Uh, Professor Osipo, do you have a question? Yeah, I just have. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. I, I I just have a little comment. So. I would like to mention that the inverse uh, problems for discrete operators are interest. It's interesting to study them not only by itself, but it's closely related to such areas of mathematics as uh, theory of continued fractions, the theory of orthogonal polynomials, and plus they have application to integration of nonlinear dynamical systems named nonlinear lattices. So I can give um, a little example. So uh, for Jacobi uh, operators, the matter, uh, it's a veil function admits an expansion into uh, an infinite continued fraction. It's called uh, Jacobi stilties peron algorithm. Actually, it was uh, mentioned, uh, partly mentioned when the degenerate case for Jacobi operators was considered. And it, uh, the algorithm for the inverse problem algorithm for Jacobi operators might be considered as an inversion of uh, uh, Stilti Jacobi Stiltjes Peron algorithm. Actually, there is a book, uh, Nikishin Sorokin, Rational Approximations and Orthogonality. Uh, it was published in, uh, translated, uh, if I'm correct, in 1990 by American Mathematical Society. So uh, if you're uh, interested, the details can be found there. And the same story is for high order operators that uh, the uh, while matrix admits an expansion uh, by uh, into a depending on its size to a vector or matrix continued fraction. It's called something like a modified Jacobi Peron algorithm. And the uh, inverse problem algorithm, uh, which was just now introduced, uh, presented here, it also might be considered as uh, an inversion of that modified Jacobi Peron algorithm. So it's a contribution might be considered as a contribution to the theory of continued fraction. And also it's of interest for, it's inter, of interest for the theory of orthogonal polynomials because we see that there are polynomials P, K, which uh, are orthogonal with respect to the moments of the whale matrix. And the same story, the, we might uh, find an adjoint uh, polynomial system for the case of high order operators. So it, it's interesting for theory of orthogonal polynomials as well. And also, as I mentioned, it has an application to integration of nonlinear dynamical systems. And uh, a brief, impre uh, actually, it's also contained in an uh, introduction to the subject in the book, which I mentioned at the beginning. So in my opinion, it's very interesting and 
<laughs> not at all boring to start the inverse problems for discrete operators. Thank you. Yes, thank you. okay. Okay, there are a lot of applications, and especially you know, for me, personally, for me, it's interesting applications to the nonlinear uh, non equations. For example, uh, where is it? Here is uh, one of this, my uh, paper just uh, is devoted to here integration of nonlinear dynamical system by the inverse problem method. And uh, there is a, a famous uh, paper by Berezansky, as I remember, yes? Yeah. Devote, devoted to this problem for Jacobi operators. So it's, uh, of course, it's very interesting uh, application of the inverse problems for discrete, uh, similar for differential operators. We use, for example, uh, we can integrate the Bosinesk, uh, integrate to Kerthevec de Fries equation using an, Inverse problems for Sturm-Liouville operator, and we can use the um, theory for high order differential operators, for example, for integration Bushinesk equation, or uh, there is an interesting equation, Bogayevlensky um, equation, and so on and so on. So it's a very high, a very wide area for applications of inverse problems for differential operators, for difference too, of course, it's way. So, any other questions or comments? Yes, Burak. I, I actually have uh, two questions. Uh, in the classical Sturm level setting, uh, we have two spectra to a two spectra in nuclear cost operator. And when we have zero potential, we have adverse minus result. One spectrum is sufficient. As far as I know, these are also valid in the self adjoint Jacobi case. Do we also have them in the non self adjoint case? Uh, one more. You mean differential operators? Uh, a difference. I mean. Uh, difference. Uh, one more. I Maybe I didn't, didn't get. Please repeat one more your question. Yeah. What I mean is in the Jacobi case, as far as I know, two spectra coming from different boundary conditions uniquely determines the operator. This is uh, two, two spectra. spectra two, two spectra is equivalent, you see. You mean the finite interval, finite Jacobi matrix. In this case, uh, you see, I, I already, uh, let me show this one. Uh, if you have finite interval, in this case, uh, M of lambda is a rational function and Q, the zeros of Q are one spectrum, and the zeros of P is, is the second spectrum. So the, the inverse problem for the for two spectric is equivalent to the inverse mm -hmm. problems for the wild function. Um, but as far as I know, if we also put the condition that the spectrum is discrete, uh, there is also a similar result in the half line case. I mean, I mean integer, uh, positive integer indexed. Jacobi operators, semi-infinite matrix version. Uh, but for infinite case, in principle, mm -hmm. M of lambda is not rational function. And uh, yes, yes, it becomes an infinite, infinite product. Yes. Um, so but in this case, uh, we need the corresponding statement, uh, which conditions at infinity. It's. Uh, mm -hmm. How you define the spectrum? Thank you, Brock. Thank Any you. other questions? Uh, uh, the question, uh, the first question of Burak was about Ambrosian type theorems. Yeah, uh, I also do such ah. a, are such a theorems valid uh, for Jacobi type operators in the non-self adjoint case. There was a question. Mm -hmm. Um, I really, yeah. I don't know, but it seems to me that here there is no analog of Ambertsumian theory. Uh, so, uh, as far as I know, analog of Ambertsumian means zero potential. So that means the coefficient a is zero. The main diagonals become zero in the three diagonal structure. Uh, so, and Natalia, the, the result is, as I understand, the result is the following. If a new are zero, zeros, yes, then 
uh, one, sp one spectrum is sufficient for unique determination? Ah, it's no problem, but it's not unfortunate. It looks like uh, maybe how uh, hosted Lieberman. If you have information, a priori information as a coefficients, of course, you need the less spectral data. This is the so-called partial inverse problems. It's not unfortunate effect. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I see. As far as I know here, I think uh, I think it's also not uh, hosted Lieberman because there are also hosted Lieberman type results. They belong to hosted. He, he also studied such problems for um, the code operators when a part of coefficients a new and b new are known and other have to be recovered. But this type of problems, when we know, for example, a new a new uh, it, maybe it's like um, the results of professor yurko on the higher order operators when we know some coefficients and uh, need less data to recover the others yeah, yeah of course but usually it depends on uh, how to say i usually call all partial problems uh, hosted later one time because first partial problems was uh, it's, it's interesting that Horst Lieberman uh, paper is, is trivial, completely trivial calculations. And nevertheless, a lot of citation because this paper was the first for, for studying uh, partial inverse problems. It's, uh, it's interesting fact. So trivial papers uh, with so huge uh, citation index. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Hochstadt's papers on uh, Jacobi, uh, uh, Jacobi systems, uh, uh, it can be said the same about them. Yeah, yeah. They're also trivial, uh, trivial and a lot of citations. Yes, some uh, partial inverse problems are difficult for studying, but some are trivial, like Hochstadt Lieberman. But from historical point of view, they were the first. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I guess no. Okay then, Professor Yurko, thank you very much for the excellent talk and your time and contribution again. And thank you very much for joining us today, everyone. Hope to see you again next time. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.